This Week in Teams, we're joined by Carolina Ketsukari, Microsoft MVP and Modern Work Lead at Melt Lake in Finland. We discuss the tools for maintaining a positive team spirit while working remotely with Microsoft Teams. started. So hello and welcome to another episode of This Week in Teams. My name is Jay Leesk. Uh, we have Craig Jenke as usual and a special hello. guest Carolina Ketukari from uh, Matt Lake in uh, Finland. Welcome to the welcome to the video cast. Hello, thank you. Um, we're very excited to have you. The goal today is to talk about, as, as uh, would have been mentioned in the edited version here, would, the goal will be to talk about maintaining good team spirit while remote working. Um, which many of us have been doing for quite a while. Uh, but uh, before we do that, you know, we, we recognize that you're very active in the Microsoft community. Uh, and um, we'd love to have you talk a little bit about, about that activity. Yeah, awesome. So thank you for having me in your show. It's nice yeah. to be here in my kitchen talking with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we tried to fly in, but it was... Uh... <laughs> cool. So my name is Karolina Kettukari and I'm from Finland, as Jay said, and uh, I'm working for uh, as a modern work lead in a Finnish company called Meltlik. And uh, basically everything I do revolves around Microsoft Teams and uh, user adoption and modern work. So how, I can, how can we utilize all of the technology that Teams brings us in order to have better working days, to have better internal communications, or to be more happier at work. And, nice. um, and it, um, it's interesting because I didn't really think about it like bef before we started booking some some international people on our, our our podcast. Like how much that is a a whole international world problem, right? That everybody wants to have user adoption and make sure they're getting the proper return on investment. I'm sure there's things in Finland that are a little bit different than us in the States versus, um, you know, England or South Africa or something like that. But uh, it's nice yeah. to hear everybody has the same problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And actually, uh, I'm also, as she said, I'm pretty active in the, in the community. So I have uh, actually, I run three user groups at the moment. And uh, one of our user groups is focused on Teams user adoption. And um, actually, the point of our user group in there is to have people all over Europe to talk about differences. So what kind of differences are, for example, in Finland versus Germany or, or Sweden when it comes to Teams adoption or having meetings or using champions in your Teams projects? Nice. And, and... Three user groups. That's amazing. <laughs> So uh, you've got the, the 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 whole of Europe adoption user group, and then what are the yeah. other two? Yeah, so it's the ACM Teams is for the adoption user group. Uh, I run it with uh, five community colleagues, oh, nice. and then we have Teams Community Finland. Uh, also, that's a user group in Finnish, also with uh, three community colleagues. And then uh, just was it yeah last last week we started this um, etiquette happy hour. A bit more like laid back, uh, have a drink <laughs> with you, <laughs> kind of yes. panel discussion when we where, where we talk about uh, the best practices, for example, for meetings in, in Teams. That's awesome. All right, it I'm going to sidetrack here. And what is the choice of what is the drink of choice for for Finland? Um, for Finland or for I, you? <laughs> for Finland, I would say beer, but huh? uh, I don't drink beer, so I would say gin and tonic. Oh, nice. All right. Nice. Yeah. A, a, a good old standard. I like that one. That's I, I wasn't sure if vodka was the one. Or... <laughs> well, which guess maybe a bit more like a Russian thing to do. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Craig, what's yours? You're a beer drinker, right? Um, I tend to go beer. Yeah. yeah. I, I do like occasionally a nice tequila. <laughs> so margarita, oh, yeah. something warm. <laughs> I yeah. could use something warm. It's uh, It's been a little cold across the world this time of year. So looking mm. forward to spring coming soon. 
And yeah, Jay, my, what do you do? My go-to um, at night is is well, my yeah, my, <laughs> I have a Jay has one every night. <laughs> my my go-to during the winter has been uh, a proper adult eggnog, so eggnog wow. with uh, a, a a dark rum in it. Um, my, we've actually got a, a, a group of friends that all get together and make eggnog once a year, although this year we cool. didn't because of the pandemic. But yeah, we have so we have a recipe that we follow called Blaze Nog. It's a good family friend recipe. Oh, nice. And then uh, I drink a lot of um, uh, what's it called? Uh, ginger and, and rye, rye whiskey. So, oh. yeah. Not a oh. lot. That sounded bad. I don't drink a lot. <laughs> you too. You drink a lot. I regularly, <laughs> Every night when you go here. to bed, you, have yeah. nog, you drink a lot of whiskey. <laughs> so, Carolina, how did you get started at, as as a member of, like, the community, as a community leader? Um, I was working, like, um, two, th- two years ago, maybe. Uh, and uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Timo Pertila, by the way, which is a uh, MVP in business applications. Oh, nice. So, so he's doing everything about Power Platform, Power Apps. So mm-hmm. he was uh, talking in some conferences. And then there was this uh, SharePoint Saturday London <laughs> happening in 2019. And uh, then he just asked that if, if there's anyone in, in the company who wants to like send a, a session to call for speakers. And then it was the last day, like deadline was was at that day. And then I was like, okay, whatever, I will send something. Yeah. And uh, then I got accepted. Like I, I hadn't even thought about it. <laughs> and then, well, there I went. And then I got so excited about all the people and the events and talking. So that's where my career started. <laughs> nice. And what was that presentation? Do you remember? I'm so many do. Oh no. What? <laughs> I think it it was about um, it was about like teams user adoption, and I think it was about how to get your management excited about adoption. Cool. Yes. So, yeah, con- convincing the management board. Yeah. Yeah, convincing them they have to actually make an effort to for, get adoption, yes. right? Yeah. 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 They they're all they're all for it as long as somebody else does it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and you and and then what was the you so you run three user groups now? What was the the first one that you that you would say you were this is I run this user group? What was the first one you said that for? Uh, actually, I started the ACM teams in last August with, with okay. a friend, and then at the same time, I also got involved with the teams community Finland. So those actually started at the same time. So okay, oh, cool. Well, so what was the driver for that? Why did you pick that and how did you start it? Because I, I thought uh, there were so many user groups around um, teams and technical stuff, more, um, more so many like dev- developer focused right. user groups. Mm-hmm. And then like none user group focused on user adoption. And then I gathered some colleagues that I knew that w- were also into adoption and change management. And then it's just like sent, I think Ale- I, I sent a message to Alexander Eggers in LinkedIn that, hi, I'm Carolina. Do you, do you want to like f- found this user group with me? Yeah. And then we got a few other uh, members in, in nice. there and, uh, and we started. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah, I kind of like when I started my first one, it was, um, I'm on the suburb of Chicago. So I'm about 35, 40 miles straight west of Chicago it was like, well, all the user groups are in Chicago and I don't want to travel into the city every time I have a meeting. So I'm going to have my own meeting um, and focus on the things that I want to focus on. And I was able to find enough people in that area to do that. So that's that's cool. Um, so what are your, um, I guess, what do, you, what do you think is the most important thing to, to focus on for user adoption? So what would you be like your quick hits? Um, oh, no, because, the, uh, because my, my like, Biggest advice always is that user adoption isn't isn't something you that is quick. <laughs> so you really have to plan the whole journey and the whole roadmap and the whole project. And it, it will take like one year or two years or maybe it's never finished. <laughs> yeah, so actually, no, that's my finish. like biggest tip. <laughs> Way to start it's, us off solid, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I didn't mean quick hits as in like you can knock them out in two minutes. I just meant like the the 
what do you think are the things that are key to go after? So, yeah. but you appreciate, great, I appreciate great, it. Too. Yeah, I, I, I agree completely with you. We talk about governance a lot here and how governance aids in security and how governance aids in adoption and how, it, you know, if you create a governance plan and walk away and come back to it two years later, it, it it's not a governance plan. It's just a document you created this one time hoping yeah. everyone would handle it. And yeah. now for us, when we talk about it, it's, it's a living thing. And so I, I can't agree with you more that adoption is this living concept. It's something you have to, you know, you have to spend time on it. You have to really uh, have an idea of how you're going to do it. Um, and you can't just expect people to start using your platform. Uh, yeah. it, it, it won't last. <laughs> Even if you have a quick spike in the beginning, it's going to be a quick drop as they realize they don't know, they either don't know what they're doing or, or how to engage. Um, so uh, out of curiosity, you know, you've been doing adoption for, for a while. How has the adoption journey for your customers changed with the introduction of the pandemic and, and working from home? Yeah, that's a that's an excellent question because um I think in 2019 we were focused on our project in in Teams implementation. So right. like moving to the cloud and the very basic so what is Teams? How do you have meetings with Teams? How do you chat in Teams? And then uh, for some mystical reason during the last year everyone were forced into into the cloud and everyone were forced in the, in the teams and uh, now everyone knows how to have meetings in teams and everyone knows how to chat in teams and um, actually that's the uh, dangerous point to be because you can have the illu illusion that you're actually using teams right. and you're actually utilizing all of those different applications and uh, things you have inside teams but in reality you have just like taken the first super small step yep yeah, I was actually not not team specific, but I was just I think there was a thread on Twitter I was following. It might have been LinkedIn where they were talking about that kind of use case scenario, right? People are using it, but using it in a little bit limited, limited function. But it was also um, the person I was I saw started to spread was started it off talking about PowerPoint and then it kind of bled into Excel, right? They're great products, but so many people just use like very limited features on you know how to make a presentation a slide but there are some cool things that you can do if you're a master and and excel can be just incredible if you're one of those one percent people that know how to use every feature so um yeah, yeah I, I totally you can paint, that. do paintings in excel if you want to yeah, yeah i can't <laughs> <laughs> actually it's funny so um Avpoint's been going through a lot of growth recently, and and I I was connect. Someone sent me a connection request on LinkedIn, and their profile is all about how they're a PowerPoint expert and they do all these things in PowerPoint. I'm like, I didn't even know that was a thing. Like, that's really cool. But but it goes to your point exactly to both of you. Really is is most people they touch a piece of software, and even if you use it every day. If, if all you do is the same thing that you do every day in that software, who knows what you're missing? And so yeah. I, I think what I've, what I've seen when trying to help people with adoption of the tool set is you really have to start introducing to them the, the variety of things that can be done in the platform so they can yeah. see that, hey, you know, I do this, what do I do? I, I, I send praise to people all the time via email, but... I could do it in teams and and not only would it be possible, but yes. then it's shared with more people and and encourages more people. So uh, absolutely agree with you. The the where that it's and I like the phrase, it's a dangerous place to be. Everyone knows how to use teams. <laughs> do they? <laughs> yeah. No, I may have to steal that. So <laughs> so from a remote perspective like how do you use teams on a daily basis and and clearly i'm not looking for like an eight or 12 hour this is everything i do but like is there is there a particular pattern to how you use teams uh considering the fact that everything is remote now yeah and basically everything at my work is in teams okay so um so for what... example, i don't have any emails oh wow Oh. Every, everything is in Teams. So if I have customer projects, they are also in, in Teams. 
And um, I have my memos in Teams, my, my files in Teams, my discussions in Teams, my plans, to-dos. Basically, Teams is my whole life, working life. <laughs> Like so what are the, maybe a couple of the things that you the, that users know who know teams don't know so what are a couple things that maybe you use that are a regular user who just thinks they know it doesn't use i heard a couple like to do and planner i mean i know a lot of people know that it's there but i don't know a lot that actually use them inside of teams yeah maybe one of the simplest things is that you can really organize your teams and your channels and you can hide your teams so your teams hide and pin channels if you want to. And that's also a super, super simple thing. Many people just don't know. And then people are, oh, I have so many teams, so many channels. How can I keep up, up with everything? And they just don't know they can really organize their teams list. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, the, the hidden teams and the pinned channels uh, and the pinned conversations and discussions are two of the things that I use regularly you know the people i talk to all the time are in that pinned section actually it was funny i was giving one of our coworkers a hard time because um you know you can't walk around the office anymore and so since you can't walk around the office there's a lot of side chats that happen you know this is my group that i used to sit with side chat or this is my um my solution engineering team side chat and and we give one of our guys a hard time because he mutes those things and then when he has time he comes back to order if someone tags yeah. him in it yeah and and i was giving him a hard time and he's like you know i have my one-on-one -on -one chat with you pinned at the top and i'm like <laughs> oh, that's such a great thing to hear <laughs> nice Okay. So how do you handle the the water cooler? You know that that lack of ability to interact with people in the hall or at the kit in the kitchen or water cooler. How do you handle that in Teams? Yeah, and and in Finland we have uh, these coffee breaks. So because coffee. Finnish people like drink the most coffee in the world for for some reason. <laughs> so so you have your water cooler and we have our coffee breaks. And um, actually, uh, one thing you can do is have virtual coffee breaks or virtual water cooler sessions. And uh, one tip for that actually is to have those as channel meetings. Oh. And channel meetings, I think, is also something pretty hidden in Teams. Many people don't use, yeah. but they are super convenient because your meeting always stays in the context of the channel. Mm -hmm. And then people just can like come and go in, in and out of the meeting. And if you have, for example, any chat in the meeting, it also stays in the context of the, of the topic. That's really clever. So one of my guys set up a regular a standing meeting for our team. I wonder if he did that as a channel meeting or just a regular Teams meeting. I'll have to look. There yeah. you go. Cool. Um, what uh, do you guys do? So you do your your coffee uh, your coffee breaks. Um, how are you handling like the the senior leadership, uh, you know, use of teams in in this kind of a space? I've heard some interesting stories. I actually heard one person created a team at, for that for that leader, and then that that person created a private channel for each one on one with all of his direct reports. You know, uh, that's probably to me a horror story more than yeah. A success story. I had somebody also tell me that too. Yeah, but, I, um, I really what heard are you a, Yeah, I heard a similar story too, but um, um, actually a super new thing uh, because Microsoft introduced the Viva concept. Yes. yes. Viva. Viva. Is it Viva in English? Viva. Yeah. It's Viva. Viva, 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 Viva yeah. concept. The paper, so the actually, uh, Viva <laughs> Insights is already there. And you can try it out. You can add Viva Insights as an application to your Teams. And uh, for example, if you uh, go to the application and then you choose your uh, close workers, cl close colleagues, then right. it, it can suggest one-on-one uh, -on -one times with uh, certain people. So you can utilize the Viva Insights to do, to, for example, the one-on-one -on -one chatting scheduling for you. Oh, interesting. Very cool. Right. I have to admit, I haven't played with it much. I should, though. <laughs> I mean, it just came out this this week, Craig. Don't feel uh, bad. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. It came, like, this week, maybe, I think, last week. 
I have been playing a lot with workplace analytics, which is kind of the sister product to that. So, um, or where I developed from, which is actually pretty cool. Um, yeah. Gives you a lot of insights as to what people are doing as groups in the organization. Uh, yeah. And really, meetings and all those kind of good things that uh, you start to to see how much they're really costing you and what people are doing. One of the, one of the, it, it's it's really cool. It takes the information in and then it de-identifies it, so you can't tell who the people are, but you can look at meetings and see like. Uh, one of the meetings I was looking at had over a hundred people had over a hundred emails sent during the hour emails uh, during the hour meeting. So it's like, ah, I wonder how important this meeting really is. Nobody seems to be paying attention. So, yeah, right. I've also heard that uh, some teams have uh, goals for their team. But when you go to my analytics, you can also see your own scores. For example. Right. Uh, what's your percentage of multitasking in meetings or what's your percentage of uh, attend attending meetings in time? And <laughs> yep. they have goals, for example, we, we want our team to be 95% on time in meetings. So I think that's a, also a nice way to be a leader remotely. Yeah. So I also, and, and not really a, a Teams feature, but um, like the Microsoft, uh, Cortana can schedule like a, a time on your calendar to block you to keep you free, so to speak. Yeah. So, pe so you yeah. can plan every day. Um, that's something that I did towards the beginning of the pandemic to try and keep myself sane, give myself a little breathing room. And then the other thing is find time. Do you guys have yeah. find time out there? I assume it's global at this point. Yeah. 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 It's global. Yeah. Yeah. We use find time a lot in trying to schedule meetings where you can, you can, provide some recommended times and send that yeah. out and then yeah, people the can respond and it can automatically create the meeting when you get enough people to do it. It's yeah. That's that's so, so when it comes to teams, what's your, uh, I mean, what are, what is one of your favorite like hidden features? You know, mm -hmm. the, the, the features nobody really talks about or knows about. Okay. Uh, one super small, but super popular hidden feature is actually when you are in conversation field, and then you press Windows button and uh, uh, what's the what's the period dot okay. period yes yes so you can get the emoji emoji yes. in your uh, screen and that's I, also people are loving this feature I have been doing that a lot recently and it's not just a Teams feature yeah it's all across so I use it on LinkedIn I use it on Twitter I use it here yes love that yeah. and, and it's you know, along that line too. I didn't know that existed, so thank you. <laughs> I'm not an emoji. I just look for them. I do old things old school sometimes. <laughs> and uh, actually, the other other one I really like people tend to forget is using people tags in Teams. So when you have a team, and it's especially for large teams, you can assign your people into groups. So you can label your people, for example, supervisors or uh, first line workers, and then you can tag the group of people instead of tag tagging the whole team or tagging a specific people. Wait, Jeff, what? Gotcha. Jay looks yeah. confused. He's never seen it before. I, I yeah, I, I apparently need to go look this up. <laughs> yeah, people tags in teams. People tags. Okay. Yeah. I knew that there was categories, like you could you could tag categories within your within your discussions, but I didn't know they had people tags too. Like yeah, it, groups. Yeah, yeah. It's um. I think it came out a couple of months ago, also. So pretty new feature. I look forward to looking into that. <laughs> <laughs> because because one thing um I don't really like is when people tag the whole team. Right. Because usually there are like ninety percent of people who aren't really involved into into conversation. So you can use the people tags to tag only to ones who are really interested in the topic. Cool. Now you're not just talking about tagging, you know, at Craig and at Jay. You're there's a there's ability to like pre-create a group of people. That's yeah. really yeah. okay. I, I just wanted to make sure I got that right. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, for the record, I know how to tag an individual. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool stuff. Okay. Um, and then you know, do you see okay, this one I didn't prepare you for, right? Do you see <laughs> A ch change in in how people will continue to work. Let's say tomorrow, the country of Finland said it's safe. Go back to the office. Um, do you see a, a change in how people work in the office because of what we've learned 
in this time working remotely? So how uh, are people working differently in inside the office or? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's a very, very good question because I think um, we we really miss the like the water cooler discussions and uh, talking after and before our meetings and and that kind of stuff. Stuff. So I hope that we'll come back uh, as soon as possible, and then maybe we can also go to have less meetings because for for some reason I think that when we are are remote we are having like back to back meetings every yes. day. Yes. Because it's so easy to have a like Teams meeting, yay! <laughs> but when, when we go back to the office, maybe a little less meetings, a little more conversations. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 this past week, people were trying to schedule meetings and they're like, do, do you work? Like, do you have time to actually work? Because you're in meetings nonstop. I'm like, I, I would love to have time to get work done outside of these meetings so yes i would love to see that's, less that's the scheduling the focus time jay what? yeah but it There's is interesting so I, time I, you can I, schedule. normally when i think about that conversation that we're kind of you're kind of talking about right now I, I think most people go oh i can work at home and i can still be productive and a lot of organizations have found that so at least here i know there's been the talk of returning part-time so maybe go in two to three times a week um, which correlates to a reduction in the the some of them are already scoping out reducing the office right because we don't need right. to have these big corporate offices that I can save a lot of money if I just give you know if I give Carolina two thousand dollars to buy her home equipment and I give Jay two thousand dollars to buy his home equipment versus building a corporate headquarters where I'm paying twenty thousand you know dollars a month for to for you to house in. Um, mm -hmm. I hadn't thought about what people will actually do when they get there. I do picture people getting there and being like, I don't want to say a party, but oh, hey, I haven't seen you for so Hi, long. Hi, everyone. Right? Yes. <laughs> but I do also picture a subset of people who will just work remotely from home, will work remotely from the office. As in, I go in there and I'm just here banging on my keyboards and yeah. I'm going to still use Teams to talk to you, even if you're sitting right next to me because I'm an introvert and that's what I do. <laughs> That's yeah. true. I, and I really, I, I really hope that uh, companies will give people the freedom of choice, so they can work remotely if they want to. They can come to the office if they want to, and then of course they have those guidelines and rule books, so the team can work together efficiently, no matter where they are sitting. I do say I do like being able to like do laundry while I'm working. Right, go go down between meetings and throw a load of clothes in and. Um, it makes it a lot easier when you get home, you know, than yeah. from when you used to get home and have to do that kind of stuff. But, yeah. Yeah. No, my my I, I my wife and I take lunch breaks together now, and as long as I don't end up with a sales meeting at the same time that her class is on break, it's been great because she gets on her spin bike, I get on my my uh, treadmill, and we can have forty five minutes of a TV show and just be together midday. Whereas you know yeah. we're both working thirty yeah. to sixty minutes away, that doesn't work. So, awesome. I, yeah. Well, uh, Carolina, you know, uh, before we go, are there any any other concepts, any other tips you want to make sure when it comes to keeping your your team, you know, in good spirits when you're working remotely? What, are there any other other things you'd like to throw out there before we say goodbye? Mm, actually, you mentioned sending praise via email, which yes. is quite yeah. nice concept. But uh, I really love to praise in teams. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, another new thing uh, in Teams, you can create your own custom price badges in oh. Teams Center. So you can create your own um, inside joke badges or so something to fit your organizational culture. And yes. those are super fun and easy way to like keep give good as your coworkers and uh, keep up the good spirit. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, I we we've been using praise a little bit more on Teams. Uh, and moving it away from email, which is nice. Uh, and actually, one of my coworkers sent me a pretend badge that he made for some, an inside joke. I'll I'll have to suggest to him that he turn that into a, a, a praise badge on Teams. It's a good idea. <laughs> cool. So, nice. well, thank you for joining us today. Yes, we appreciate it. Uh, thank you. All the way from Finland. It's yeah. <laughs> so from Chicago to Finland, it's a it's yeah. a, a wide it's a, a wide array. And, and a stop <laughs> in Virginia. So yes, you're you're from Virginia, right? Yeah. 
that's that's right. I'm just just outside of Washington D.C. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you, Carolina. Have yes, a great thank day. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Nice talking to you. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>